Yes crew, what is going on? My name's Liam Cox from Tech House Market and today I'm going to go through my top 5 mixing tips in order to achieve a much cleaner, punchier and more professional sounding mix. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing that I wanted to go through was how to achieve a more punchier bass and how to make it stand out in your mix without just increasing the volume and without it just sounding too muddy. Other than side chaining your bass to your kick, there is another technique that I really like to use. And basically this involves actually EQing the kick drum. What I'm gonna do is first play this for you guys so you can hear the sort of groove that we've got going on. So yeah, you guys get the idea. So basically what we've got here is a main bass and then just some layers here, which is just adding a bit more sort of texture and interest. Let's say we have this bass line and we've already side chained it to our kick. How can we make it punch through even more and stand out in the mix without sort of making it even more muddier? The thing that I like to do is get your kick and if you go to your plugins and just open up a channel EQ. And now basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a small cut of the EQ anywhere between like 60 to 80 hertz. And this basically is the section where like the sub and the low end power from your kick and bass will come from. So all we're doing here is just doing like a minus two, minus three dB cut on a bell curve at around like in between 60 and 80 hertz depending on sort of the kick and the key of the kick. And basically what this does is just basically just create space for your bass, especially the sub information for your bass to sort of pop through the mix. So you'll hear this pretty well on a sort of bigger sound system or if you've got monitors that you're working off. I'm gonna do it before and after, just turn this EQ on and off and listen to mainly the sort of bass section of this kick. For a more extreme version for people that are sort of listening on phones. So if you're listening on the headphones, you can hear a lot of the sub information is being taken away, but we obviously don't want to be that extreme. All we're doing is just creating sort of space for our bass to come in. So if you wanted to really exaggerate this, we could have our EQ on the kick, which is making space. Then on the bass, we could do the same. So we can grab an EQ and then we can do the same thing, the same curve and increase it by two to three dB around 60 to 80 Hertz. And then basically what this is going to do is make the sort of sub of the bass push for our mix and it's it's not going to sound muddy because we've made space for it in our kick so now if we play them both together so as you can hear super heavy low end just by doing a simple trick of EQing a pocket in our kick and increasing the sort of same area on our bass to get that really punchy low end so the next tip we're gonna go through is basically how to make your drums more snappier and punch through your mix, but more specifically your hats and your claps. If you guys hear a lot of records, the producer somehow manages to make their hat and clap still punch through the mix, even though they've got all these other elements going on. And basically we can achieve this through multiple things, but I like to use a method called transient shaping. And basically what this does is you can increase or decrease the attack and the sustain of a sample. So I like to use this on my hats. So if I'm pulled in a reference track into my project and I AB between my track and theirs and the hats are sort of sounding weak and they're not punching through the mix compared to their ones, I'll use a transient shaper. There's quite a few to choose from. I believe Waves do one and Sonox as well. But I like to use this Neutron Free and there is an inbuilt transient shaper and it's very simple. You've got an, an attack, a sustain and a slope. So sharp, medium or smooth. And that's basically how these attack and the sustain will work, how quickly, etc. So all I've done here is just increase the attack a bit and then decrease the sustain. And this basically make my open hat more punchy and will allow it to sort of push through the mix and be more present. So I'm going to turn this neutron free transient shaper on and off and I'm just gonna play this loop here and I want you guys to really hear how much more the sort of open hat punches through the mix when I turn it on and how much sort of it gets taken away and swallowed up. So 
So as you can hear, it really pushes it through the mix. That sort of initial snap that the attack is giving it and pulling back of the sustain allows it to really punch through and the towel is sort of shortened so it gives it that more like punchier feel basically and the difference is night and day like it punches through the mix gives it more power so yeah if you're struggling to sort of get your elements to snap in your mix and be at the forefront and you don't want to just increase the volume then try using transient shaping so the third tip that I'd like to show you guys is basically how to achieve that really wide sounding bass that fills the spectrum and sort of the stereo field and basically how to achieve it while still maintaining a really strong like mono signal that will work well in clubs. To show you guys this, I've got something new that I've been working on. It's very basic, it's just got a small vocal hook and a basic groove, but it's got a cool bass line that I can show you guys sort of how to achieve this sort of effect. So if we just take a listen. It's taking over in my mind. So as you can hear like super nice rolling bass but if you're listening in headphones especially you'll be able to hear like it's really wide fills up a lot of space and it gives it that sort of power and the way to achieve this is basically have multiple layers to your bass i like to start with my main bass line all i've done is just draw in some midi it's very simple i'm sure i'll change it later on but basically what i've done here is open a game plugin and i've set this bass to mono so basically this is going to be right down the middle this is going to be your power and where your sub information comes from so if we play this so this one has sort of zero stereo information so this is just like i say providing the power providing the sub bass because we don't want to have our sub bass in stereo because that could cause a lot of like issues in the clubs like your low end won't be as powerful and yeah it's always good to have your bass or at least your sub bass in mono and then basically to achieve this sort of wide effect i've got another bass which is basically a slightly different sound and all i've done here is just low cut it to about 200 you can get away with like 150 something like that just as long as the sub information is gone and then yeah so once you've cut it then you can use like a widening plugin like an imager to increase the width or the sound in like for example serum might already be like a wide sound it might use multiple voices and a bit detuned just don't click this one on mono because you want it to have that sort of stereo information to fill up the sort of space so if we play this by itself so really wide sound but again no sub information so when we layer it with our regular bass we get this And they're both doing sort of different things. This is the sub, this is the wide bass. And I like to group these into a bus so that they're both sort of doing the same thing. They're both going into the same sort of side chainer. But yeah, this is really useful. If you want to achieve that really wide bass effect, make sure to use multiple layers and then cut the second layer without the low end. So then have the sub sort of bass doing that for you in mono. And yeah, have this one as wide as you like and just mix it in. So yeah, give it a go. So the fourth tip I'd like to share with you guys is basically how to add echo to your vocals but how to do it in a way where it doesn't sound muddy and sort of clashing with the actual vocal itself. This especially works when you're using like echo and like quarter note echoes. I've got this vocal which is from the same track as the last one. It's taking over in my mind. So it's got a little bit of echo already from the vocal but we wanted to add like a sort of big quarter note delay. And if I go to my vocal bus and do a delay send, so far on this, I've got an echo boy, which is doing the quarter note. And the first tip to sort of make sure that the echo is clean is to cut the low end. We can be quite harsh on this and sort of a little bit of the highs so that it's just sort of giving that mid sound of echo. Like we don't want anything too harsh and we don't want anything too muddy. This is sort of a general rule to sort of clean up your echoes. So all I've done here is just add the echo boy and the channel EQ. So now if we click play. It's taking over in my mind. 
So as you can hear, the echo signal is playing when the actual vocal is as well. So it sounds like it's clashing a bit. So a way I like to avoid this, rather than just to automate each individual bit to sort of come down when the vocal is playing is basically to add a compressor onto the delay channel this can be any compressor for this i'm just going to use the logic one just to show you guys basically what you want to do here is side chain this compressor to your vocal bus and basically what this will do is compress similar to like a kick and bass relationship this will compress the vocal echo when the actual vocal is playing and then when it stops playing then the vocal echo will sort of come back and stop being compressed. So obviously we can reduce or increase this threshold to sort of get a decent amount, maybe like minus 10, so that we can hear clearly the vocal and then it will obviously return back to zero when the vocal stops. So if we click play. It's taking over in my mind. It's taking over in my mind. It's taking over in my mind. So we can again adjust the attack and release as well to suit the echo. It's taking over in my mind. It's taking over in my mind. So as you can hear now that we've got this threshold all the way back here. It's taking over in my mind. As soon as we click play, the echo won't be playing when the vocal is. So it stops that sort of clashing and it allows the vocal to still sort of punch through clearly. It's taking over in my mind. So when the vocal stops playing, the compressor stops working, returns to zero and the echo sort of comes through. So that's cool. But again, the echo still sort of pokes through the mix. It doesn't really sit properly. So another way or a technique that I like to use to sort of solve this is after your compressor, again on your delay channel, open up a reverb and this can be any one. I like to use the Valhalla Vintage Verb. You can adjust this mix and adjust the settings to what sort of works. But what we're doing here is adding reverb, not to the vocal, but to the vocal delay. So it will give it sort of a nicer sound. It will sit in the mix better. So if we listen now with this reverb. It's taking over in my mind. So the actual echo is now sort of sitting better because of this reverb. So if we do with and without, we'll do without first. It's taking over in my mind. And then with. It's taking over in my mind. So yeah, a much nicer sort of echo sound. And if you combine this with the side chain compressor then it'll make your sort of vocals stand out clearer but also achieve that really nice echo effect so the final mixing tip that i'm going to share with you guys is basically how to compress your drums but how to do it in the proper way and i'm going to show you a method which you can use every time to get the sort of correct compression on your drums so if we dive into this project this is again another project and i'm just going to use the drums from this one because i think it's quite a good example and what i'm going to do is first i'm just going to play the loop with and without the compressor and so you guys can sort of hear what's going on so this is without And with so as you can hear it's gluing it together basically is what it's doing it's making the kick sort of work better with the rest of the elements and it's sort of tightening up sort of the hats making them less sloppy and basically just making the whole groove work together if we dive into the actual compression I'm going to show you a technique that doesn't need a professional engineer to do. You can do it yourself and it's not complicated and it works every time. So I'm going to use one of the most famous sort of bus compressors, especially for drums, which is the SSL G bus. And this one is, I believe, from SSL Direct from their website. But you can get like Waves SSL G buses or in Ableton, I believe it's called the glue compressor, which is basically modeled after the SSL G bus. So if I reset this compressor, I'm going to sort of show show you guys the thought process and how I came to this sort of compression. From the start, when we open it up, first of all, we want to achieve around two to three dB of sort of gain reduction or compression. As we don't want to go crazy for our drums. We don't want to like squash everything together. We still want to have some dynamics. So aim for around two or three dB of gain reduction. So the first thing I like to do is I like to set the attack to 30 milliseconds. This is because we don't want to sort of touch the transients of our kick and our sort of hats and claps. We still want to have that punch. 
So having a sort of slower attack time allows the transients to still push through the compressor. And then the ratio, I like to do a two to one ratio for the drums. Again, we don't want to do anything crazy. We don't want to squash our drums completely. And then another good feature of this SSL G bus is the high pass filter of the side chain. So if, I like to do this all the way to 185 hertz. And basically what this will do, it will leave our low end alone. So our kick won't be compressed or 185 hertz and below won't be compressed. So it won't mess with the sub information in the kick, which is really important as a lot of people turn on the compressor and it completely ruins their kick, takes away all the power. So that one's super important. So we've got our attack ratio and our side chain set. And all we need to do now is basically choose our release. And this is sort of preference, but as a rule of thumb, anywhere between dot three and dot six for the release is good. And it's obviously like dependent on the track and how you want it to sound. But the way I like to decide this is I'll set my ratio really high temporarily just to sort of help me decide. So if we go to like 20 to one ratio, then all I'm gonna do is pull back my threshold until we get quite a heavy sort of compression around like minus 10 or minus 12. And then all I'm gonna do at that point is flick through between dot three, dot four and dot six on the release. And the reason why I'm doing this at really high compression and ratio is because it helps me hear sort of a lot clearer which release sounds the best and sort of what works for this track in particular. So if we click play, So now this is heavily compressed and I'm just going to flick through these sort of three releases and then just see what works. So as you can hear, the sort of the dot three allows the hat to come through a lot more, whereas the dot six is very like kick and clap focus groove. So again, it all depends on what vibe you're going after and you can sort of listen to your references and see how their drums sound. But in this instance, I'm gonna go for dot four, which is sort of in the middle, a nice even sort of mix. So now that we've got everything set, we can turn our ratio back to two to one, put our threshold back, but now we've got our attack and our release, how we want it to sound. So now all we're gonna do is pull back the threshold until we get minus two to minus three dB reduction. And now the only thing to do left is basically increase our makeup gain to sort of match the levels in volume with how it was before. So I like to start doing around 1.5 and then if we just listen to sort of volume wise and turn it on and off and see if it sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds great. So yeah, that is how I compress my drums and how every time I get the result that I'm after using that technique that I just shared with you guys, it makes a world of difference. Like it's sounding now super tight. Everything's working more together. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video. If you liked the video, then make sure to click like below. Make sure to comment as well what else you want to see and also subscribe to Tech House Market and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.